We have a group at the University of Michigan that works together to look at thyroid cancer outcomes, cancer care delivery, and population health sciences. So with thyroid cancer, we want to know what's optimal for our patients and is our care being tailored appropriately. And so very little of the research done to date has looked at surveillance and the long-term follow-up of these patients. And since most of these patients do well, they're going to live a long time and this surveillance is important to them. For this particular study, we focused on what's going on with patients after they've been diagnosed and treated with, for thyroid cancer. And so we looked at surveillance and specifically the use of imaging in these patients, trying to figure out are they being imaged appropriately and what's the impact on their um, outcome, particularly looking at recurrence and survival. Over the last few years, what we have seen is that the incidence of thyroid cancer has been rising. However, the use of imaging has skyrocketed. The reason we were interested in looking at this is because uh, with the marked rise in imaging, and some of these are pretty costly procedures, um, downstream, what's the impact on uh, catching recurrence uh, treatment, and then eventually, are we uh, saving lives? We worked with SEER Medicare data, and we had 28,220 patients that were diagnosed with well-differentiated thyroid cancer. These patients were diagnosed between 1998 and 2011, and we followed them for a median of 69 months. The modalities we were looking at are repeat neck surgeries, additional radioiodine scan, and radiation therapy. What we saw is that uh, there has been a marked increase in all these modalities but only radioiodine scan had a downstream impact on, on survival. There is a large group of patients for whom these techniques might be unnecessary and uh, it might put them, like by catching these clinically insignificant recurrences, uh, we might uh, put them to additional stress and worry. This study suggests that you know we have more and more low risk patients, we're imaging more and more, but it's not always used appropriately. There are select patients that do require this sort of intensive surveillance and it may be beneficial to them, uh, but for all comers it may not be that more imaging equals better care. We feel that this study is the foundation for future work to be done. So after this study, the next steps are cost effectiveness analysis, randomized controlled trials, and then we're really look interested in looking at the role of the patient and the provider in the decision making. So who's deciding that this imaging should be done? And we think that's key in sort of making sure it is appropriate imaging for that patient.